Um, the video you're going to see in a couple of minutes is about tightening the head down on a 300 TDI using the technique uh, of the HS 2.8 uh, instead of going around 60, 60, 20 you know for the number of turns you just do it in one great big turn I'll explain that clearly uh, in the video I think I said 60, 60, 60 and 20 ignore that I've because I've never done one for a long long time but the, the, the reason why I'm doing this introduction is I got a call from a chap called Stefan in the United States yesterday uh, and he seems to have a lot of problems with overheating on his Defender. <laughs> Surprising. Anyway, um, when we talked about it, 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 we came to the point that he'd had a new head fitted to it and a, and a new head gasket and the chaps who fitted it said, oh, it's a, an OEM gasket. So after a bit of detective work and a bit of questioning I found out they'd fitted the original L-Rig composite gasket and I said oh shouldn't have fitted that should have fitted a multi-layer shim gasket never have a problem with that and I've never had a problem for 12 years never had a head gasket go once it's, it's a, a multi-layer shim but he wanted to know what the difference was now I'm not going to take the the head off again to show you but just to uh, give you a rough idea this is a composite type of gasket this is off a 2.5 diesel, so it's not. I, I don't have the ones for the uh, 300 TDI, I have threw them out. But this is a composite and it's made out of. I don't know what the hell is it made out of? Cardboard. Um, some sort of material. That stuff. And it's got rings around it to protect it, the edge where it goes around the cylinder. So that's a composite one. But I always fit this type. The multi-layer shim gasket and they are sort of far superior this is for a 300 tdi and you can see there's different thicknesses of shims in there so when you tighten these head gaskets down it's metal you know it's solid metal unlike this sort of pathetic ring here now it seems strange that because i have to be very careful what i say now because this got me into trouble with lawyers letters over Christmas. I don't want to go down that road again and I'm not mentioning those supplies or anything but it seems strange that two L-Rig gaskets might have gone I'm not saying I'm just saying to, it could be a possibility that that gasket's gone the same way that Stefan Bouchard's gasket went um, from the same manufacturer I don't know but this is the ones I fit I always fit Victor Reins ones I don't fit the Brit part ones or the cheapy ones for the simple reason I know for a fact that the material on this black material on here is actually a sealing material. It's not paint. The very early brick part ones, I do believe, were paint. They weren't a sealer. So Victor Reince gaskets for me. Um, this is the sort of typical part number. All right, that's a typical part number. Now, the thing is, I can't say... Uh, for Stefan, what particular gasket he should be fitting, because obviously the shop who fitted it knows best. But we have to make sure that these holes here are the right number of holes. Anyway, I've got to go, so back onto the um, video. See ya. This 300 TDI engine I'm doing for uh, Joe in Carolina, where, wherever that is, <laughs> it, um, it's been a, a video folly, believe it or not. Um, I'm using these sort of new microphones so that you can hear me a little bit more clearly and when I'm over here and things like this. But the thing about it was, for most of the videos, I had, I had this switched off in my pocket. It's got a little light on it, but I, didn't, I couldn't see it when it was in my pocket. So most of the videos, uh, you, I'm going, it's like Charlie Chaplin movie. So anyway, I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to piece together a few bits of the highlights and things I found and try and do a voiceover to just salvage. I've got the video, but I haven't got no voice. Oh, and another thing, when I was messing about with this, I was started off with doing two cameras and my favourite camera fell on the bloody floor. The, the airline caught around the tripod and fell over. I think I can rescue it. I'm not sure. It's got some stripes on the screen. We shall see. But today's video is uh, thanks to Patreons because I've lashed out and I've spent some money. 
I know, I know. You're spilling your beer now. But we're going to do the cylinder head on this 300 TDI engine down here. You can see it's come on sort of in leaps and bounds now. It's all cleaned up and, uh, and there wasn't, there was very little wrong with it. It took longer to clean it than, it, than anything else. But I'm gonna, I've got a, a two hole multi-layer shim gasket. It's a Victor Wright's gasket or head gasket on here. And I'm going to torque it down. Now you can see I've already got the push rods in and the valve caps on because I've had the rockers on so I could turn the engine to the right position before I put that. I just put the belt on just temporary if you see what I mean. So I wasn't going to hit the pistons. But um, I'm doing, like I say, I'm doing it like a HS 2.8. And on the wall, on the wall, actually on my lift here, I've written down all the torques from bolt 1, 8, 1 to 18 on the specifications it should be for the HS 2.8 because it seems to work out kind of nice for me and I've never had a head gasket blow yet and it's quicker. So like I say, the first bolt is an M12 140mm long, um, 60 newton meters, then a further 150 newton meters. We've seen this but on the 300 TDI book it says you have to go around them three or four times. Oh that's a pain. <clears throat> but what I've done is so I've got them all down there so I can read off top to bottom. Now this should be on the memory stick. If it isn't, let me know and I'll send you a copy. Now I've also got a, a picture here of the head bolts. That also should be on the memory stick and that will correspond to the cylinder head down here. Now, the tool I used to use <coughs> was, uh, I used two tools. I use this little simple device here for setting the bolts to either 20 newton meters or 60 newton meters. I put a little dot of paint on there because this was kind of easy to, to use. And I used to use this laser tool. Now this has served me for a long, 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 long time. And it's been good. And it's, I've, I've set it at 60, um, 60 degrees so that when you turn it, it tightens it down. But I thought I'd go into the future. <coughs> with the help of patrons and I've always said I'll buy myself a new torque wrench and I did because this Mastercraft one came on special today instead of being $300 it was 250 bucks and I'll tell you something I was impressed I was going to get a you know like something really super special but I thought this is this is pretty bloody good because it's digital but it will do everything that those two tools will do. So I can set it up by the number of degrees it turns, flick a button and then continue on to the specified number of degrees, like 150 degrees for example, without moving the tool and that's really helpful for me. Um, I'll see if I've got my original tool in the box over here. I don't think I have but I'll have a look. No, I, I, must, have, I must have thrown it away because it felt a bit... Uh, I'll put a picture up here and show you it. It was one of those white plastic things with a dial on. Oh man, they were hopeless. You can never really get them accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what, why I, how I do this. Now, the HS 2.8s had a better system. They, had a, they already had a multi-layer shim gasket. And considering it's the same or similar block and similar head, there's no reason not to use it. Um, <clears throat> But they they give a different tightening sequence. Well, the same sequence, but a different method of doing it. So you only do it once. So we've got here our torque wrench, and we're going to hit that bolt there. So I'm going to swap this out for a longer socket, and then we'll show you. Now, one of the tricks that I've done. Um, maybe you can see on the crank down there. If you can see on the crank down there. I've got a strap attached to my lift because if you've ever done one of these on um, on an engine stand, not in the car, in the car it's kind of easy, but if you've ever done one on an engine stand, it's like Torval and Dean, you're going all over the bloody place, skating around trying to hold that and counteract 150 degrees of uh, twisted motion. So <laughs> it's, it's fastened around there so it works out quite well. So let's have a look at this and see how this goes. So first of all, 
we're going to turn it on right so we're going to find oh it self calibrates which is a bit of a pain but never mind we'll we'll work it out sorry about that we've got a bit of an interruption there so now we're going to set this to 60 newton meters that's it we're going to go back we're going to change the setting to 150 degrees you ready These aren't good. They're not going to come off. <laughs> going over a bump and your cylinder head comes off. They are quite, quite a job to turn it to 150 degrees. And when you're doing it 60, 60, 60, uh, 60, 60, wait a minute, 60, 60, 60, 20, it's not so bad. But when you do it all in one go, it's kind of hard. So I'm going to get on with this. Finish these off. And uh, what are you pointing? Look at that. And then we can uh, come back and do something else. But I'm, I'm really impressed with that. I like the little buzzer thing. You know, when it changes colour. So we know that we're almost there. Right, less of this rambling. Let's get on. So I've just tightened down the head on this... Uh, 300 TDI using the HS 2.8 method and what did I think of this Mastercraft torque wrench? I thought it was very good. Uh, there were some good features in it. One of the good features is the counter is, well you're going to take it off that one. So if you want to go up and down it's extremely fast counting. That's a good thing so you don't want to mess it. You remember the old days when you used to twist the lever? Anyway I like it because it beeps. But one thing I've noticed when you're uh, talking bolts down, you need to put a little bit of light oil on the thread and, because it says that in the book, and under the head. Because if not, it'll start jerking around and you start then to lose your settings. It's very difficult to say because I noticed there was a pause when I was doing one bolt and I had to back it off and do it again. One thing I would like to have seen in this would be a memory that would have been brilliant if it had a memory like so if, so you could flick through uh, all the different settings and put it onto a memory mode and say look this is this bolt this is that bolt for now i think it's a good thing i don't do a lot of these heads now and it does take a little bit of time to do but it does take a lot of time to do it with the 60 60 60 20 method um yeah no i'm liking it i think it's good but like you say you've got to strap the <laughs> you've got to strap the engine down really tight you know make sure it's not going to move because 140 degrees is kind of a lot to tighten the bolt down anyway it's my new toy we'll see you later <laughs>